What's going on, guys? Today it is the second day of the Power Weekend. And one of the things that we have going on as we're building out the Corporate Citizen Playbook is we're doing a lot, a lot. So this is where we are, and this was the training that was put in yesterday. The things that you don't see on YouTube, the things that people don't talk about on YouTube, how to start your business. And today we're going to get into the uh, sales format. So what you want to do is go ahead and get into the how to start your business lessons by joining the corporate citizen playbook. And you go ahead and get in now. You're going to get this juicy lesson. You're going to get so many things that are going to help you go ahead and set up your business. You're going to get so much that's going to help you set up your business. And we're going to get into some really deep and important things. So what you need to do is go below, get into the corporate citizen playbook, because if you get in at this low price that we have currently, you will get everything that I'm going to do the rest of the year. So this is Glendon Cameron. I'll see you guys in the next one. There's a lot of conversations about easy side hustles that virtually anyone can do. One of the biggest things that is going on right now is the number of people who are literally running over to Etsy with ChatGPT, Midjourney, Galley, or Dally, Dolly, D A L L E, uh, Leonardo. There are so many instant side hustles that are all predicated on AI and digital products. And I was looking at this and I was like, oh, at least easy. There are so many popular YouTubers that are putting out this content. And let's go ahead and talk about these YouTubers. I'm not gonna mention any names. I'm not gonna point any fingers, but the thing is these YouTubers to me are like reporters. They've researched it, but they don't do it. And I saw a very interesting video by this uh, one content creator that was reporting all of these things you can do. And here is where these things get very, very tricky. Let's say you use ChatGPT and you're using Midjourney and you create some type of agency. All right, so the ChatGPT makes doing the work really easy and the um, mid journey makes you know the prompts and stuff really easy now you have this agency you have this business right how are you going to get your customers this is one of the things that i have not seen in any of these videos how to get customers because i sell digital products and getting customers is a complex paradigm. Um, the things I have to do to get customers, and here's the thing, I see the appeal of the easy side hustle. The appeal for the easy side hustle is to tap everyone in the public. You, 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 you. Here's this easy side hustle that you can do. You can go ahead and go to chat. Uh, I will say I've been working with ChatGPT. I've been working with Midjourney, And yesterday I created the perfect thumbnail. And that video is doing the best that I've had a video do on that channel. The thumbnail is a perfect realization of the video, of the title and the content. And it's taken me about two months to get to this level. Now, one of the things that you will never hear from these reporters. Um, they're, you know, they've got their fans. They've got people who love them. But I would say, and put this in the comments, let me know if you agree that 99% of these reporters never actually do the things that they're talking about. They never do it. Because when I talk about, like, give you a good example. 
I was running into a problem with mid journey. I was trying and I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I was trying to do. I was trying to create an, a, a cute Asian woman in a pink bikini wearing high heels. And I was trying to get it thumbnail size. Mid journey just simply wouldn't do it. Would just would not do it. It kept coming up. And typically when I get uh, a prompt that's denied, it, it has a little button where I can appeal it. And typically the appeals have been working, but for some reason, mid journey would not create a picture of a hot Asian woman in a pink bikini with high heels. It would not do it. And you know, with chat GPT, uh, I had an extremely long, uh, prompt written and I had to tease it and play around with it to get it to write more because I kept going, all right, continue on, continue on. So because I'm working with this AI technology from a real world case scenario, I'm trying to use this, te this, uh, AI technology to make money. I am trying to use this AI technology to make money. I'm not trying to report how easy and how simple it is because let's go back to the number of YouTube videos that we're talking about how easy it is to create the back end, the stuff that you do, uh, the business thing. And there is not like literally you can go ahead and watch these videos. There's nothing that's telling you how to get customers into your agency because I'm going to tell you why it's definitely not. You just learn this one thing and you get customers. No, no, no. Mm -mm. It, Cause, uh, one of the things I'm doing today is another power day for me in the corporate citizen playbook. And we're going to get into, uh, the sales methodology. Yesterday we got into marketing with your demographics and we're going to get into the sales and sales thing. And one of the things that you will have to understand and you would have to acknowledge is when you get into the sales prompt, like I'll go way, 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 way back when I used to be selling, um, office furniture, what's the first thing I had to do? Like the back end, the facility to in the contacts and the product lines that we were signed up with, that was really easy. These are the product lines. These are the warehouses. We can access the warehouses. That was easy. Let's go and talk about getting customers. That was the hardest part of the whole journey. That was number one leads you had to find leads. Finding viable leads is somewhat difficult because essentially you find a lead. That's step one. You have to find viable leads. Step two, you have to call the lead. Step three, you have to learn how to do cold calling and to get yourself an appointment. Step four, you have to go on the appointment. Step five, you have to learn how to close the appointment. Step six, you have to learn how to get the deposit check. Step seven, you have to stay in communication with the customer while their furniture is being built. Step eight, you have to learn how to manage the installation team. There's eight steps to sell office furniture, eight steps. And with you coming online, it's not as many steps, but it's more than one. It's way more than one thing that you, you know, I've seen these videos. When I learned this one thing, this is when I became a six figure per month seller. And I'm just sitting there and the, the, the video, I'm not going to get into some details with the video. If you're making, and th this is something else that, that uh, I find to be really interesting. And this is one of the reasons that I am moving out of this place is you've got all of these people, right? Who are claiming to be making six and seven figures, right? And they have the smallest homes. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to be living in a smaller home. Cause you know, let me share some with you. Um, you know, I always had this dream of living in a high rise 
And earlier this year, I tried to move to a much bigger high rise and the competition for three bedrooms, uh, there are like 2,500 square feet to 3,500 square feet. It's, it's pretty competitive when you're talking about getting a larger uh, condo in a high rise. Uh, this one condo I went to look at, and I didn't know the day that I looked at it, not one, but two other people looked at it and everyone put in a bid and it became a bidding war. And if you know anything about real estate, condos do not appreciate like houses in townhomes. They just simply don't. Um, this building that's right here, it was a couple who was selling a townhome they had been in for 24 years. 24 years and they were only going to make like a $250,000 differential during this pandemic we have seen single frame houses in the hood appreciate $150,000 in two years um, so that was one of the reasons that I just backed out because essentially if I had gotten this town home this uh, condo I could have put myself in a situation where I could have been underwater, where it would have been harder. And I'm talking years down the road. I'm talking about not like two or three years. I'm talking about five, 10, 12, 13, 15 years down the road. I may not be able to get what I had to pay to get it. And I'm just sitting there like this. This is just bad business. Uh, when I was doing the negotiations and uh, this one couple, they offered because essentially uh, the third person, we got them out, but the first person, they went up a hundred thousand dollars more and I wanted to go up and I just told my real estate agent, let them have it. I'm out because one of the things that happens is, you know, when you're participating in real marketplace and I'm seeing million dollar homes selling like that. And I keep, you know, the, whenever I come across, I don't watch them because I know that they're. They're there for the lower class. They're there to incite the lower class. They're there to, you know, make people think real estate's going to crash. And then you will be able to buy a house once real estate crash and the pricing comes down to you. Let me say something, and this is going to be wildly unpopular. Real estate is not going to crash in the price points after this inflationary period is over because Inflation comes and goes, it cranks up. Housing prices are not coming down to where you want them to come down. They're not. Because this is the thing, from the last recession, uh, 2008, they have put in so many safeguards with getting a mortgage, the things you have to do, that essentially we have better buyers. And we have people with good credit, money to put down, and they're being priced out the housing market. What does that tell you? good credit, money to put down, a good job, and they cannot afford to buy a house in these United States of America. And you think that the real estate prices, like um, I know for a fact the real estate crashed. Uh, there was a house that was on the street that I used to live on that it went down to 256000 and then I recently checked the, the price on that house is like 750. So that house is more income back. And if the original owners, because it was for sale, the original owners did not stay in there. I don't know why, but they didn't stay in there. So, you know, you, you see a lot of stuff here online that leaves out important details like, you know, all of these easy side hustles. Um, once again, I was watching a video by a guy and the guy seemed to be pretty smart. And because I'm a doer, once again, he had put a prompt in and I used his prompt in mid journey and it didn't work. It didn't work. And I was just sitting there like, this ain't working. The, the, you know, maybe when he was spelling it out, maybe he forgot some things because the prompt that he had put on the screen, it didn't work. It didn't work. And I was just sitting there like, oh, goodness gracious, it ain't working. And you have these people talking about going to these platforms and especially Etsy. Etsy, Etsy is, I would not be surprised that if Etsy doesn't gain 
an additional 10 million um, sellers by December, I would be shocked with everyone pushing over to Etsy to sell these easy, simple digital products that you can make in 15 minutes. And I'm just sitting here like, uh, I am on, I am creating a digital product. It's an online course. And I have been working on this for weeks. And it ain't done. It ain't done. And I'm just sitting here, all of this language that you can literally just, you know, create a little, little product like this in a few minutes and just sell it over and over and over and over. I'm just sitting there like, hmm. This is right up there in the realm of a guy who is 55 years old with a pot belly living in a trailer, working a minimum wage job, and he's gonna have this outrageously beautiful woman just come up in his trailer and be with him. That's, 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 the, that's the parallel that I see, because this, this is how they get you. Easy, simple side hustle that anyone can do. And, you know, it, it's really, really interesting. So that's that. Let's talk about the death of cold calling. Back in the day, I was a cold calling monster. Pick up the phone, that phone in my hand was like lightning. I would call anyone and I got so good at setting appointments. And I would say cold calling to the average consumer. I got a question for you, please put it in there. How many of you answer your phone from a number that you don't know? I personally, I will tell you there's a few exceptions where I will answer a number. And this, this, this is just how nerdy I am. Um, DoorDash, if they don't follow the instructions in the app, they'll get lost. So whenever I order DoorDash, I'll typically be very close by the phone because usually when the phone rings, it will be the DoorDash driver. And two, whenever I'm doing something from a business standpoint, and this, this is how I am. I'll look at my phone, and if I'm by my computer, I will go ahead and type that number in to see who's calling. And if it's, oh, I'm doing business with them, then I'll pick it up. But if it's like, goes to one of those robocalls or something, I'm not picking that up. I literally, my phone rings. I'm just ballparking it because I haven't really been keeping up with it. But I would say about 100 times a week, with numbers, I have no clue why these people are calling me and I don't answer. I don't answer. And that's why I feel that cold calling in 2023 is one of the worst ways that you can do business in this environment. Because now, once again, I have not done any cold calling since like 2000, 2000 was the last time I did some cold calling. So we're like 22 years ago. So I've not been on the phone doing cold calling, managing customers. Now I would say business to business cold calls could be different, but I know as a consumer with my behavior, and once again, please put this in the comments. How many of these calls that you don't know who's calling you just answer it? I mean, and also iPhone is doing, Apple is using a lot of AI because this is one of the things that happens. My phone will tell me with a great de degree of accuracy if it's a spam phone call or it's a phone call that's coming from a web, because Apple has this AI that crawls the internet, that crawls these databases and they just know they just know if it's a spam phone call. And I surely don't answer that because I'll see it as a spam. And if it's not a phone call from coming from someone I know, I'm just pretty much not going to answer it as a consumer. Now, there are some business phone calls that, you know, I know the number. I know it's a business and I will answer that. But typically, um, I just will not 
You know, cold calling people today has got to be one of the hardest things you can do from a business perspective. It has got to be extremely hard to get people to answer the phone. It's got to be one of the hardest things you can do. And, you know, once again, I was a cold calling advocate. I've done a lot of cold calling in my life, but starting a business today, and once again, I haven't done any business cold calling. I haven't done, and it's called outreach. Um, based upon the things that I've done, and this is something that we're gonna be getting into next month, is how to create inbound leads. I've been creating inbound leads for, since 2009. I've not done any outreach. I've not cold, cold called anyone. I haven't networked with anyone. All of my money, millions of dollars have come in from inbound leads, which means the customer gets to know me. The customer has a feeling for what I'm doing. And then with creating trust points. So that's one of the things that I'm going to teach starting next month how to make a lot of money with a small YouTube channel. And there, there's multiple ways you can make money with a small YouTube channel. You don't have to have a lot of subscribers. Um, my smallest channel, it was making me $15,000 per month, was an earlier disruptive mail channel. And literally, you know, I haven't because essentially I've been focusing on the bigger share because typically over here, um, yeah, I just started selling again this month, and this is May the 28th, and I've already made way more than $15,000 from this channel setup. So one of the reasons that I did not, you know, I would do it because I was creating content for that channel and I would get sales, but I did not really stagger it or situate it the way that I do over here, and the numbers show this, the real deal because, um, you know, this is something else that I'm going to share with my students. How much money I've made this month because the month is still going on, but it's going to be um, pretty interesting once the final the month is over and once we get those final numbers. But one of the things that we will see and one of the things that we will acknowledge is the setup of your business and the setup of getting cut. Like, like I said, I think just knowing what I know about my behavior as an active uh, consumer, I don't, I just don't answer phone calls. I don't know where they're coming from unless, you know, it's DoorDash or maybe it's a business or something. And I could say, you know, once again, I have not done any business level cold calling. There may be room for that to work because essentially, um, I know there are people who are still cold calling and there are people probably making money from cold calling. So from business to business, I feel it would be different, but I know cold calling consumers and these people who are trying to do wholesaling and they got to call these homeowners, I think that's, that's just gotta be tough. That's just gotta be really, really tough because, um, the average person doesn't answer the phone unless they know who's on the other end. I just, I just don't, I just can't see it. But once again, my observation could be incorrect, but I could see a lot of people trying to cold call. And if you're a cold caller, please chime in here and let me know your experience because I just feel that that would be rough cold calling people. It, it would just be rough. I mean, I almost was going to call this video the death of cold calling. But once again, from a business side, and I, since I don't do it and I don't know I'm not going to put a final seal on it because, you know, there could be some people who are cold calling that could be doing quite well. But once again, I just look at my behavior 
And that's one of the things you have to look at. How do you respond to stuff? And I'll tell you something that I did that I knew was going to be a little risky and it cost me $10,000. I bought an email list and a huge email list and it didn't work at all. It cost me 10,000 to buy the list. It cost me 3,500 to email all these people. And the first email list of 500,000 people. And I sent my first email and I only got 30,000 of those 500,000 people to open up. And literally out of that 30,000, 10,000 hopped off the list just like that. I sent out maybe 30 emails. And every time I sent out an email the list, the number of people who opened up got smaller and smaller and smaller. And I actually did no business after spending 15 K because, you know, I was kind of like, I knew from a, a entrepreneur standpoint, I was taking a risk because I was like, if I can get 10% and 10% of 500,000 is 50,000. If I can get 10%, to actually convert and activate. Oh yeah, it's well worth the money. Couldn't even get 1% because this is something else I know from personal experience. Back in the day, I used to just throw people who would email me on Craigslist. I would just throw their email in my database. And back in the day, my open rates were like 90% and I was throwing people on the email list, throwing people. So, you know, Emailing people that don't know who you are and have no expectation is one of the worst ways that you could market today because um, I was having the conversation with the company and uh, actually I did a chargeback because I'm like, this does not work. And the salesman told me some other stuff and to appease me, I got another 500,000 person email list. So I'm sitting on a million um, person email list. Now, there is a way to use that. And that's something that we'll get into with the marketing because um, there's a way to use those email lists from a business perspective, but you gotta do more than just email them because emailing a list that doesn't know who you are, doesn't understand what you're doing, it, it's one of the worst things you can do. And once again, I, I kinda knew that I was walking into some strange, strange areas. And, you know, I, I just took the risk knowing that I could fail and 100% fail. And I'm like, because that's that's one of the worst things you can do from a marketing standby is to buy a list. <laughs> it can be well, not not really if you do the other things, which is have uh, Facebook outreach, Google display outreach. Cause there, there's more because like seriously i got a million person list that i'm going to utilize at some point in the future so it won't be a complete waste of money because i'm telling you you know this whole thing with marketing and reaching out to people and this whole thing is you can do these simple ai businesses and they're so easy they're so easy it's complete another bs is complete another BS because whenever you get from the back end of your business, the things you have to do to make your business work, and then you try to interject customers into that, that's when it gets hard. That's why I'm writing this book, how to seduce the customer, which I haven't started on because I'm still developing myself and I'm developing the um, protocols I need to do. But man, this, this, this is one of the craziest things I've ever seen. So we're getting ready to get into it. So if you're not in the corporate citizen playbook, I'm going to tell you, you need to go ahead and get into it before midnight, June 1st, because the price is going to go up because there's going to be more courses. There's going to be more options. There's going to be more things that are going to become part of that situation that is definitely going to be a game changer um, because the price is going up and I have seen people, I've had people email me. It's like, hey, could you keep the price there for another month? And I'm just sitting there like, I've literally had a bunch of people and I'm just sitting there like, 
this is one of the things I know. And I know this from selling cars. When people come to you without enough money, the chances of them getting that money at some point in the future is um, not that good. And I'm about to explain to you something that I did today, which will show you. Um, I had a whole bunch of people, because uh, this is a big, big assertion. I think that Facebook marketing was bringing me a bunch of bots because I talked about it in the video, how I would pump up the ad and I would get people who would respond and I would respond back to them instantly and I would never hear anything from them. So I wrote a new ad and, on Facebook and I actually did a video because the vehicle is lowered and it has an exhaust delete, which means when you start it up, it's very loud, but then it settles down. And then I did a video of me driving the vehicle, right? And I put in there, do not contact me on Facebook. If you contact me on Facebook, I'm just going to ignore you because I want to see who's really interested in this. And I've raised the price because it's a fine vehicle. And we're going to see because there's a price because I raised the price to 13,000. I got rid of the old ad and I will let it go for less than 13, but I just had too many, and also women. And another reason I did this, I was getting a lot of women and I'm just sitting there like, how many women want a vehicle that sounds like that? Not the average woman wants to drive a rah-rah vehicle that's making all this, this, this stuff. So I got rid of that. And we're gonna see, cause I did this today. I replaced the ad on Facebook. I replaced the ad on Craigslist. And we're going to get ready to see because there, there's so many things I have learned from selling cars and there, 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 there's crazy. Now, where am I going with all this? Once again, these people, these easy side hustles, right? Whenever you get to the point where you have a product or service and you have to extract money out of a customer, out of a client, that's when it gets difficult because I remember when I was selling those cars, when it always got to the point for them to give me the money, it was running around, checking the car out over and over and over again. And I'm just sitting there like, give me the, give me the money and take the car. Let's go, let's get this over with, right? It, it was just one of the most frustrating things. And uh, next week I'm going to look into my two other cars that are in the shop and get them out and get them sold. So we got a lot of stuff to go, but once again, it's power weekend and um, I'm going to be talking about how to create a sales process in the corporate playbook. So the corporate playbook teaches you how to sell up a holding company, teaches you how to sell up operation companies, teaches you corporate banking, teaches you and there's a hack in there where you can start getting um, business credit funding. There's a hack in there. And then we're going to go through the marketing and then we're going to go through setting up the how to sell stuff and then we're going to go through branding so branding is going to be towards the end and today is the 28th 29th yes yeah, so i feel that we're going to get this done um, by the end of the month and then we're going to move into how to make a lot of money with a small youtube channel and that's going to be some of my it's going to be some splendid channel like i can personally testify i had a youtube channel with seven thousand subscribers i was making fifteen thousand dollars a month fifteen thousand a month consistently so if you want to be part of the corporate playbook just go below get in and use promo code jump j-u-m-p to get the discount because june 1st the price is going up and there's going to be some additional things out there that i'm going to do so Go ahead and get into it. The link's gonna be in the comment section and the link is going to be in the description. My name is Glendon Cameron and I will see you guys in the next video.